first six months, I, I, I didn't play paddle. I was playing tennis. I joined a USTA league. I was super into it. Someone invited me to play. And I was like, no, no, no. The courts look small. Doesn't look like it's that aerobic. And then finally a buddy was like, come play, come play. And I stepped on the court. I hit one ball and felt something in my soul that like I've never felt in my life. And we are all things paddle. Hello everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of Paddle Smash Academy. And today we're so excited to have uh, he's been called the Fred Astaire of paddle for, because the way he moves on the paddle court. <laughs> and not only that, he has the most sexy looking hair dude in the entire paddle world. <laughs> His name is Jared Filkenstein. Please, Jared, welcome to the, to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Good. Tell us uh, who's Jared Finkelstein and how did you get involved in paddle? Yeah, sure. So Jared Finkelstein is a, a New York transplant that came down during COVID. Uh, had never heard of the game in his life, uh -huh. right? Living in New York City. The access to tennis is incredibly difficult. And so was a mildly skilled high school tennis player, but the 15 years after that really didn't play much. And so it came to Miami, the idea of being able to get back into competitive sports and, and really excel in some sort of way. And so uh, for six months, I, I, I didn't play paddle. I was playing tennis. I joined a USTA league. I was super into it. Someone invited me to play. And I was like, no, 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 the courts look small. Doesn't look like it's that aerobic. And then finally a buddy was like, come play, come play. And I stepped on the court. I hit one ball and felt something in my soul that like I've never felt in my life. So who is, who was that? Who was that? It was my buddy. His name's David Greenberg. He actually doesn't play that much anymore, uh -huh. uh, but he was kind of my, my entree to paddle. And, and what, what, what club was that? Winwood. Uh -huh. Wow. Right. And everyone, <laughs> yeah. right. That's start, where you everybody start. Everybody starts to win with a yeah, real, right? It, it, it's <laughs> or, it's or the epicenter life. to start, start your uh, paddle journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how the journey starts. Your journey started and I, I make the joke, right? So I'm a single guy. I make the joke that like, I felt something in my soul that day that like I've never felt before. And, and if I ever get married, I hope I feel that when I meet that woman, because it was, it was real. Well, right now you're married to paddle. I'm married to paddle. That's so fair. let me ask you from one to 10, what is your addiction level? 10 being super addicted. I'm 10. Really? Uh, yeah. I, I play only three to four days a week. And, and the only reason I don't play seven days a week is physically it's a demanding game. Yeah. And, and I, I am, I'm about to turn 40 years old. I'm very aware of the fact if I got injured, my, my lifestyle and so much joy <laughs> I get in life goes away. And so the other three days I'm training on mobility and flexibility to make sure that I'm in a position where I don't get injured on the paddle very court. Very smart. Very smart. I didn't do that. And once you hit that, you're 40. So once you hit that 50, you, you're prone to get more injured. And you can't play as much. You need recovery. Yeah. You need to, you know, do other types of workout. Um, at best, at three, probably a, a week. So you're, you're pretty smart in that, that respect. But for me, the passion was so much that I was playing almost every day. You know, it was uh, it was it was too crazy. You know? yeah. yeah, and it's tough to say no to games, it right? The, the beauty of the community that we have in Miami <laughs> is we're in 35 group chats, yeah, and so there's always a game to be played. It's, it's like a date, right? Yeah. If somebody asks you, you don't want to say no. You feel like you're going to reject them. You know what I'm saying? For sure. <laughs> How many times have you done double sessions within the same day? Like double get matches? I try not to do it once again because of fear of injury, but it yeah. happens all the time. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I maybe <laughs> maybe once a month, but I, I really shy away. And then look, tournament play, it happens all the time, right? Yeah. And so when we're playing in tournaments and I travel for tournaments and I love that aspect of paddle you know a lot of times you're playing two matches in a day saturday right there's a red paddle tournament i already know my matches are 12 and if i win that it's five and like i'm already trying to to strategize what am i doing am yeah. i going home to stretch and recover am i staying there and just waiting it out and i haven't come to uh a solution on that so yet. now that you mentioned uh red paddle i know you're involved with red paddle in a many different ways Let, let's talk about what's coming up with red paddle and and what is your your what is that you doing there yeah sure so so red paddle an organization that that hosts tournaments around the country and really around the americas um and and last year they hosted something called the america's cup where we had 12 teams come around from canada uh and and south america and obviously teams in the states that compete uh, different levels. So it was category division one, division two, II, division three. Um, and it was each club or each community built a team and then traveled. And so this year, actually the, the tournament is in Mexico. I think they have 16 teams signed up for it. And, and, wow. and the Mexican facility is that it's at a, like a crazy resort. And the idea that they're trying to create there is their, their tagline, something like trying to make amateurs feel like professionals. And so what Charles from Red Palette has explained to me is it is going to be like a first class 
event where you feel like you're a professional athlete in an amateur activity? So that seems like the third organization that's kind of doing that. You have the uh, PPL, you have the uh, Hexagon Cup, and then you have now the Red Paddle creating like teams, yeah. right? Like some type of franchise things. Is that what Red Paddle is going to do? Create kind of like these franchises like PPL and Hexagon? I don't think that's the goal, right? Miami is a different beast than the rest, right? And so let's just talk this out, right? I assume Paddle House is going to send a team, right? They're super Mm -hmm. involved in everything. Paddle House is a real community, right? The guys that play there only play at Paddle House. And so them going as a team, they're a real team. Yeah. Yeah, Right. The Miami community is challenging, right? Because we all play at all the clubs. And the reality is, is like, we don't have an allegiance to a club. We all have a club that we like more than another, but we're going to play where the games are, where we're invited to and kind of where the opportunity is. We have options. We have options. (laughs) And so, so for this, it's, we're hosting a a tournament this weekend at Canyas, um, uh, four or five different divisions and the winners of uh, men's division one and men's division two and women's division one uh, earn qualification to play on the Red Paddle Miami United team that's going to go to Mexico. Good. So, so I was going to ask you about that. So it's men and women. It's men and women this time. Yeah. So they're not mixed. Not mixed. So either you play. Okay. Good. There, there is part of the bigger tournament this weekend is there is a mixed category, but in okay. terms of America's Cup, it is it's split. It's and how do you define the levels? Uh, by Red Paddle ratings. And so okay. in, in this, it is, um, I think the, the cutoff was over 12 was, was division one. And so you as your part, you and your partner have to have a combined red paddle ranking of less than 24, uh, to be in division two, anything above that would be in division one. 24. So if you, okay. So you, the, the two of us are 12, it, that will be division one. That would be division one. If, if one of you was 12 and one was 11, 99 then you'd be division okay two. so and how do do i sign up i mean if if i want to play with let's say with sets i mean we're tw- we're 24 so the captain decides to put us on the team or we should sign up and we're part of the team yeah this was open this was open invite and so you can sign up through the red paddle site um okay. and the way that it works is red paddle has designated coaches that that are at different clubs in miami and so if there's someone new that signs up and they don't have a rating okay. uh, red paddle will actually reach out to their designated coaches and find a coach that knows the player Okay. to give an initial rating that's smart yeah, yeah. it's one of, it's one of the difficulties of the start of a new rating system yeah. right because at the beginning people are they could be over over ranked or under ranked and then over time that'll kind of play out but at yeah. the beginning you, so, you never I, know. I, mean, I really don't see a solution yet for the rating system i mean there's a few different you know variants you know one being um uh the clubs doing it you know you know the coaches um, coaches yeah. coaches doing it and then the other one being, um, uh, what's that? Uh, Playtomic. Playtomic. Yeah. Well, at Red Paddle is similar to Playtomic, right? The, the more matches you play, the, the the algorithm will bring you a higher ranking. Is right. that the way Correct. it is or not? Yeah, Correct. Yeah. In the sense of, I mean, your ranking can go lower if you're losing all of those matches. Yeah. But the yeah. idea is, and, and they have, uh, there's an element to um, um, how accurate your rating is. And the accuracy of the rating is based upon how many matches that you've played. And so there, there's two different elements working at it and, and it's real time and it's always updating based upon the guys that you played in their new rankings. And they're trying to work out the kinks. As you said, it's a really difficult yeah. thing to get at the beginning. And that's just pretty much in the Red Paddle organization though. That, Correct. That's, that's the thing, right? Yeah, yeah. My understanding, and it, hasn't, and it hasn't rolled out yet. My understanding was USPA was moving to Red Paddle rankings. Wow. Yeah, that's right. what I read on, on the website and what, what's happening with, with that. I, yeah. I don't know where we are in the process and I don't know if that's going to update next year okay. um, or how it's playing out. But that was my understanding is that at some point that's wow. going to happen, which would be great in the sense of, look, in, in USPA tournaments right now, you pick and choose which category you want to play in. Yeah. The nice part about Red Paddle is like you're playing where you're supposed to play based upon your rankings. Yeah. Um, and so it, it creates a more fair playing field for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that that's one of the biggest things that um I think I I am I'm, I'm probably correct me if I'm wrong, but people think they're better than they are because they have a tennis background and it's a completely different bull. Yeah. You know, because it doesn't make a difference if you, even though if you have a tennis background that paddle court paddle is different. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And well, you know, sometimes they they do well in the rankings yeah. because they're smashing or they're athletic and they do pretty pretty well, but once they play with uh real paddle players that they have difficulty you know for sure yeah so where do you see now you're an avid player you're involved with these tournaments and all that and tell us a little bit about your tournament i know you've been winning kicking some butt with some great partners i mean tell tell, tell us a little bit about uh your winning uh 
trophies. Sure. So, so my journey has been a good one, right? So yeah. I view it as I started playing almost three years ago, will be my anniversary, right? And as I said, hadn't really played racket sports for the 15 years before that. I've never held anything in my hand continental grip. And so like, I'm still like, I, I'm a now pretty competitive Western, player. Western continental, for and, sure. And I'm still learning to, I'm like making an adjustment right now to hold the racket properly, yeah. right? So my learning curve is, is pretty vast in, in terms of learning how to play paddle properly. And so when I first started, I was a low end division four player. And, yeah. and for me, as I said, like this game touched my soul. And so I have a lot of passion and commit to something when I'm in. I went from being a low end division four player to the best player in division four to a low end division three player to the best player in division three. Yeah. And I'm proud to say at this point, like I'm a middle of the road division two player, which yeah. is amazing. I've, I've, I've seen your progress in the past couple of years. And I'm, I'm very, very impressed what you have done. I mean, kudos to you, man. Thank you. Well done. Going back to your grip. Uh, so do you use all continental grip now or do you? change it up depending on the shot it's depending on the shot now I'm, I'm finally getting to the point where i can do that um I, I struggle the most with like simple normal ground strokes once yeah. the ball goes off the wall like yeah. i feel great yeah. and, and and our 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 tendency is to not let balls go off the wall right sure. it, i guess it's the tennis background in me that mm -hmm. i want to play balls early yeah. but like getting that patience and letting balls yeah. play slow and and get off walls then i'm great i think that's a great point i think a lot of like me coming from tennis as well is you're used to like a western con uh, eastern is it let me see uh, western western grip yeah grip and because you're hitting the ball a little too high you know what i'm saying uh and you're hitting it too much power and a little bit of top spin and and that's what you're accustomed to. So, you know, hitting the forehand with a continental grip gets takes some you getting used. To, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. And because yeah. uh, it, it's definitely a different stroke than than, than tennis, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. and, and the, the higher the level, the, the, now you guys, it's about I call it two millimeter rule. But you changing the the grip mm -hmm. two millimeter one way or the other, and it's making the difference in between going the ball deep or not. You yeah, know? that's your Tolito. I you know, your Tolito to all around the world. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I always make the joke, right? Division one, two, three, four. They're, yeah. they're four different sports, yeah. right? Yeah, the, the, yeah. the play of division four is different than the play of division three, which is different than the play of division two. And then yes. division one is a whole different universe. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can kind of get away with, you know, inefficiencies mm -hmm. or, you know, not holding the racket the right way in the lower divisions. And you could do well too. And you can do well. Yeah. But yeah. as you get up to real paddle players that know how to play, they, yeah. they eat you alive. And so yeah. at some yeah. point you have to almost take a step back yeah. which is really difficult mm -hmm. and you so got, it's yeah. it's willing to to you, sacrifice you've got to unlearn what you've learned yeah and play worse before play better yeah you yeah. know especially if you come from a different racket sport and that is so true for sure so that was you were at the pad in toronto yes yes and i saw some great pictures and you made it to the final you won that tournament. i i lost in the finals and oh. so i had uh i played with charles who is the owner of red mm. paddle and also the, the world famous charles Messel. yes wow and and he opened with his buddies that the pad and so i felt a lot of pressure actually going yeah. there <laughs> our first match was was the toughest match of the tournament for so, us so whose fault was it that was charles lost? Yeah. i'll definitely take the blame we played enough we played the we played the coach there and we played another owner of the pad. And before we went on the court, I told Charles, like, this match is for his ownership stake. Like, this is everything. For blood. This is for yeah. blood. Actually, funny story. Match one, we played two guys from Paddle House that are awesome players. Um, and, and it was, like, the opening night of the pad. So Charles has, like, all of his high school buddies there. And, like, cheering on, you know, drinking a lot, very vocal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Set one, I didn't play that well. And, uh, and we went down and we lost the first set. And like, I, once again, I felt the pressure and then I settled in and then we ended up winning in a super breaker, but wow. it was a super intense, super fun match against really good competitors from paddle house. And it was, it was a special night. So wow. tell, tell us about the club. It's, it's, it's coming out long. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, look, I just was talking to them yesterday. They, they just closed for the season. Right. So that's one oh, of the that's things right. that sucks. Totally it's it's yeah. outdoors. Mm -hmm. Um, it's in an amazing area, like right outside the main city. Yeah. Um, one, six courts. Um, and beautiful. And I thought there were only three. Four, four, no, one. It's either four or six. Okay. I'm trying to picture it and it's four or six. Okay. Maybe it's four. <laughs> okay. Um, but they, it, it was awesome. And the community that they're building was, was amazing. So what was, what was so 
awesome about that tournament was that was essentially the opening of the pad, right? Yeah. So they got folks from the community that have essentially never played paddle and their introduction was a red paddle tournament that is run mm. incredibly well, masseuse on hand, <laughs> you know, you're giving your times early, you're able to go to a yeah. website and see your brackets and click your name, you know, you feel like a professional. Yeah. And so it was, it was super cool watching people get introduced in the game in that environment. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, that's one of the great things about Red Paddle. They do a good back end work, meaning one of the issues now when you go to the USP and all that, you have to use to, you know, third party websites or Paddle's manager, I think it is. Yeah. But Red Paddle, everything's on their website. You can see the scores. You can see their, they have an app too, which is a really great yeah. app. So they're doing a good job on that. So. For sure. And for me, look, I'm an anal New Yorker, right? And so, when I go play a USPA event, it's like I'm I'm basically giving up my weekend, right? Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You hope you're playing yeah. all three days. And so I'm clearing my schedule. Yeah. But the reality is I don't know when my next match is. Yeah. And so I want to plan from a recovery perspective, yeah. from an eating yeah. perspective. Yeah. And I'm waiting for my match to finish to yeah. find when my next match is. The nice part about Red Paddle is I know my four potential matches for the whole weekend. Yeah. I can map everything out <laughs> and like I'm prepared. And so the anal New Yorker in me really struggles <laughs> with that with the USPA. So you, t tell us a little bit, you play with the legendary Maxi Rosas. Yeah. And you you raised a trophy there, right? We did, Houston yes. Division Two. We, oh we won. my God, tell us all about that. Yeah, for, it, so look, that was a that was a circumstantial partnership in my opinion, right? Maxi's obviously a, a Division One player and one of the top 10 players in the States, right? Yeah. Amazing, in the nation. In the nation, mm -hmm. yeah. amazing competitor. Mm -hmm. And Red Paddle was, was doing this thing called the Summer Series where there were four tournaments throughout the summer. And the top three players, based upon points accumulated, got to go to Spain to train with Javi Garrido. Wow. Right? Oh, wow, that's amazing. Man. That's a good one. Yeah. Side note, my favorite player yeah. uh, on favorite. tour. And the reason that is, is <laughs> when the World Paddle Tour came to Miami, yep. um, night one, it was Javi played against LeBron. Yeah. And took him out. And took him out. <laughs> and it was like a super intense match. Willie was involved on the sidelines, mm -hmm. like a lot of heated energy. Yeah. And Javi that night was flying all over the court. On fire. On like, fire, right? like hitting the most insane smashes I've ever seen mm -hmm. in my life. And so from that moment forward, like You're huge fan. fan. <laughs> and and then last year they came, you know, when Reserve did their thing and they had a lot of players come. Javi came and like yeah. got to speak to him. He was the nicest, cool, coolest right? guy. And so like <laughs> Like, that's my guy going forward. Love him. That's incredible, man. So but how was that experience? How, what club was that? It was at the Woodlands. Um, nice club. So awesome club. So it, it's off like a dirt road off a railroad track in the middle of nowhere. And then all of a sudden, like surrounded by awesome trees and a ton of courts. And from a spectator perspective, a lot of room around the courts to watch matches. Yeah. Uh, it happened to be like dead end of summer. And so we were playing in like 97 degrees, <laughs> Houston <laughs> heat. At oh, like man. two o'clock was the final, um, so super hot. But look, Brutal. from from a maxi perspective, so so going back, sorry. Um, the reason he played with me and did two is we did the math and we said, look, if our, our red paddle ratings would qualify for division two as a, as a combination, and if me and Maxi were to win division two, and Peter Alonso wouldn't win division one, note he lost in the finals and got injured, and so oh. probably would have lost anyway. It was a super tough match, but then Maxi would win the trip to Spain. And so we oh. went with an agenda. Okay. And that was the reason he played with me and came down a division. Um, and they had, so you won the tournament? We won the tournament. Did he went to Spain? Uh, I think they're going in February. Oh, so awesome. he's going to Spain. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good yeah. Maxi. Yeah. So it was, it was pretty special. And, and ironically, we played two of our Miami friends in the finals. Who uh, was that? Andres and Gomez and, and Pepe. Wow. And so, and, and they're guys I play against every Saturday and they've been dominating our Saturday <laughs> tournaments. Yeah, and so, yeah. you know, it, it's a win. I joke around with them that it's a win, but it's not really a win because I beat them with Maxi. Like I want to beat them. Right, right, right. I want to beat them with another person at our level. Yeah. And yeah. so that's what we're trying to do this weekend because they're the one seed in the Red Paddle tournament. I'm playing with our other friend, uh, Luis, who's also really good friends with them. And I hope to see them in the finals because that would be awesome. Good, uh, man. What, what day is the finals? Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Where, where's, where's it hosted? At Canyas. Canyas, okay. Have yeah. you tried to apply, uh, uh, register for the Pan American Games or not? So I, I, it was, I'm super proud of Team America, what we just saw. Yeah. Like this was, the last couple of days were amazing, seeing yeah. the highlights come through and mm -hmm. all the Instagram posts. And at the same time, like my, my heart was breaking that I wasn't there. I didn't know the process, right? I'm still new to the sport and how it all yeah. works. And 
I'm over 35. And so from a play perspective, I can definitely play yeah. on the, in the over 35 category, yeah. but I never played a senior USPA event. And so I have no rating there. Oh, okay. And I really only played two or three USPA tournaments. And so I don't have a ranking there. And so I heard next year is the, like the bigger games, right? The, yeah. and so I'm going to, a goal of mine is to put the work in, play the tournaments and hopefully be a part of that team. Good. So you're, you're spending a lot of traveling, paddle traveling. So you're going all over the place. Yeah. Tell us the, the, the place that you were. You were in Houston. You I, went, did- I went to Houston. I went to New York uh, to play in Red Paddle at Paddle House, which was awesome because that was indoors and outdoors. And okay. so playing in outdoors. So you play at Domino's Park. At, in Domino Park. Oh, nice. yeah. Like having spent, like I had friends come to watch. And once again, <laughs> from like my friend perspective, they've never heard of this game. Yeah, yeah. They see me obsessed with something and posting about it and playing. And they're like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so for them to be able to come meet, see me play in a real tournament and see how awesome and cool it is yeah. was, was great. Um, I played in, um, I just played in Connecticut at the Sports House. Sports and House. so new facility that opened mm-hmm. up there. Um, six indoor courts. <laughs> Amazing and beautiful. It was six indoor paddle courts, six pickleball courts, a golf simulator. Um, you can get wine and beer off yeah, the wall. Yeah, the, the taps, yeah, right off the <laughs> wall. The Amazing. Uh, yeah. I'm going to Argentina. Uh, in I leave Christmas night. I'm playing in something called uh, the Maccabee Games. Oh, which is you, you are, that's right. Which is essentially Jewish Olympics. Yeah, um, in and, a call. Yeah, and so yeah. got an opportunity to go play there. And so that oh, will nice. be like my first. And they're doing paddle with the Maccabean Games? They, yeah, they're doing that's paddle. Awesome, yeah, and so I'm super excited to play oh, there. Yeah, I've never been to Argentina either. And that's oh, like awesome, right, one of the I'll, meccas of, of paddle. I'll be there a yeah, week before yeah. that. So, you know, I'll cool. see you there, hopefully. Cool. Go yeah. ahead. Excellent, man. So Jared, what, I mean, what's your what's your goal in paddle? I know I know you started as like a hobby, and now you seem to be getting a lot better. Is there any any ultimate goal besides just a hobby? Or yeah, it, it's a great question and one that I'm asked all the time. Um, I have a I have a full time real job that I'm very <laughs> fortunate. I'm I'm mildly successful in, and so from a business standpoint, I'm not in paddle for the business side of things. I am very much in it because. It is a passion and gives me so much joy. And and naturally, I'm a connector. And so I get involved in clubs and connecting, you know, distributors and and people that build courts and professionals just because I know no other way to operate is to connect people, especially good people in something that I'm passionate about. And so I just want to continue to live in this in the world that I'm living in, Um, have my real job. Um, that I spend a lot of time in and then have my side love and, and just do right by people and help people and, and grow this game in the country. All right. So we have some quick questions, sure. fast questions that we're going to ask you really quickly. Uh, and we'll start it off with uh, go ahead, Julian. Why don't you ask the first one? Yeah, we call them the golden point question. Okay. So it's either you're going to take it or not. So do you prefer to play your right or left? I'm a lefty. And so I only play Ooh, the right. Huge advantage. So, yeah, you must huge have a advantage. Line of people wanting to play with you. Yeah, you know huge advantage. Wow, it's great. All right. Do you prefer playing indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Good. Power or finesse? A finesse. Ooh. I have no power. <laughs> I, I can't. I still. From a well, I know. Player? I know we're on paddle smash. Yeah, yeah. I, I still <laughs> can't smash. You're ah, kidding me. But I mean, you come from tennis, right? I yeah. mean, the, you have the serve. That's I've always been a much. grinder. Never had a great serve. And, and that look, that works in paddle, right? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. my ability to play defense Does. and just grind through points is what lets me be successful. And the reality <laughs> is the person on the left is supposed to be the power player anyway. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so I'm really just playing my role. Gotcha. And I'm just forced yeah. to be there because I'm a lefty anyway. All right. right. Now you've visited many clubs. Which one would you say is your favorite? I, I think there's different elements to it. And so I think from a community building perspective, what Reserve is doing right now is incredible, wow, right? right? The, the fact that they have these night events and these exhibition mm-hmm. matches and you're getting almost everyone from the Miami paddle community to come watch, hang out, drink, and just be social is, is incredible. I think open from an indoor facility perspective is probably the best courts in Miami. And the fact that they have five of them to be able to host bigger events is incredible. And then I personally love Canyas, uh, outdoor facility. I think the courts play really fairly, um, always well-maintained, can actually get a, a, a court there yeah. uh, where other courts you can't. And so three different elements. And, mm-hmm. and, and I would say those are my three favorite places. Really? That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Good. So the Hada or by three? Bahara. Mm. Okay. Bandeja or Vibra? Vibra. Oh, nice. What is your worst shot? Uh, the smash. So what's your best shot? Uh, Bahara. 
Wow. Who's your favorite uh, professional player? Javi Garrido. Yes. Yeah, we knew that one. All right. What, uh, what's your favorite uh, racket? Pat? What do you use? Adidas. I use Which that, one? the Addy, uh, power? Addy power. Yeah. I, I've been moving between rackets, but now I'm playing with the, the yellow power racket and felt a huge difference before that I was playing with the metal bone and for me, um, super powerful, but like inconsistent at spots. Yeah. And I find with the Addy Power, no matter where I'm hitting it, it's it's like firmer and Bigger more controlled. And so I am. I just ordered two more yesterday. Wow, that was <laughs> good. good, man. It's worse than me. <laughs> from, from where did you order them? So I've always bought, you know, very difficult to find cheap paddle rackets, yeah. right? Everything here is retail. And if you're getting it from overseas, it's taking three weeks yeah. or a month to get here. Nico Tabilo, who is one of my coaches, I broke my racket three days ago in a training session with him. And he sent me a link to paddleproshop.com. Okay. Guys, really? for $308, I bought two rackets and they're arriving at my apartment tomorrow. You're and, kidding And me. so if, if it shows up, if it wasn't a fake UPS... <laughs> notification that I'm getting. If these two rackets show up, I will send this to every person I know wow. because every racket there is massively discounted. But oh, why? I can't, I can't answer you. <laughs> I can't answer you. I know nothing about That's it. Great. I mean, I got it on the, I guess it was Cyber Monday sale because it was Monday okay. I bought. But I think if I were to buy those rackets today, it maybe would have been 350 instead of At 308. Least. Yeah, you're talking about seven dollars For, two. Dollars. for yeah. two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. like, it's great wow. deal. Yeah. great deal. Wow. Golden point, you take it or you give it? Um, depends. I have a policy in, in, in oh, gold. talking about policies. No, that's, I, that's a policy. That's very important. I have you a know? policy <laughs> where me or my partner will start on the court and one of us will take golden point and it's your golden point until you lose it. Ah, interesting. Right. Gotcha. So then it takes out the emotion and like where we are in the match and it's either mine or yours. Cause my whole thing is like, try to take thought out of things and just yeah. allow the game to play. Um, and so that, that's something that I've been instituting with players recently. Good. Nice. Uh, that's, all that's right. So one. who's, uh, your favorite partner? Well, I was fortunate to play with Maxi in, in Houston, right? Is that and your so favorite one? Playing at a different level and playing with someone who has skill set is incredible, right? The learning curve and the ability to watch him play super slow, not rush anything is, is amazing. And so obviously amazing experience and love playing with him Good. in terms of my level, um, Luis Guzman is someone oh, that I've yeah. been playing a bunch with. Uh, we're playing in the player. Red Paddle t tournament together this weekend. I think so much of it is just being aligned. He plays smart, slow, Very controlled, smart. Yeah. and recently has started been picking, able to pick up his power. And so that's a combination for me, which is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Because when I play with someone that wants to play tennis on a paddle court, my, my rhythm's off. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where to be. I'm out of... 100%. And yeah. so 100%. We, 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 we dance well on the court together. Nice, nice, nice. Who's your favorite coach? Adrian, Bellatorino. Wow. Um, Adrian is, I've been with him now two and a half years and, and, and to me, he's, he's a coach, right? And where, so where he coaches, he coaches me at Canyas. I, okay. I think, uh, he probably coaches at other places too, but I think Canyas is his home. Okay. Um, Adrian's been playing forever, former, uh, world paddle tour player, and he's a coach, yeah. right? He yells at me. He gets mad at me when I hit bad shots. And like when I'm in a coaching session, I want that. Like I'm in that to improve and get better. And so the fact that he's not just feeding me balls, he's in that world with me and um, forcing me to improve is, has been a huge awesome. value add to me. Wow, wow. Awesome. Okay, so for 2024, where do you see Jared and, and Paddle? Uh, I would love to win a division two championship with, wow. with, a, with a partner at my level. Right. I want, I want it now with Maxi. Um, I, I view that as kind of a, a cheat code. And so that wasn't real, but would love to get my game to the point where I am a, a top player in division two. Um, and I, I think with the continued work and dedication that I have, it, it's possible. Um, you know, this game for me right now is in, it's intoxicating in the sense of I'm turning 40 and like I'm growing exponentially at something. And that is not normally where you are in life. And so I'm on this crazy journey of, of growth over the last three years. I don't know when it ends. At some point, you would think I would plateau. Um, but until that happens, I'm going to just continue grinding, working hard, and doing everything I can do to get better. Great, great, Beautiful, great. Beautiful, man. Yeah. Excellent. Jared, thank you for coming on Paddle Smash Academy. We want to wish you all the luck. Thank yeah. you, guys. And we'll see you on the paddle court. Absolutely. Thank you. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. And remember, it's free 99. It doesn't cost you anything to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for tuning in to Paddle Smash Academy. We hope you'll find our videos informative, helpful in improving your game and learning all things paddle. So until next time, keep improving your game. And remember, learn, play, and share.